Asia Live. Time now for Asia Live. Today we're heading to Franz Van Katz Bureau in Tokyo and our correspondent Justin McCurry. Hi to you, Justin. You're going to start us off with a look through the headlines in the press there. That's right. Uh, just a, a couple of stories from this weekend, uh, both from the Japanese Asahi Shimbun newspaper. Here you can see a rocket launch. This was a successful launch at the weekend of the Epsilon rocket. Now, this is the first rocket to have been built in Japan, the first new rocket for 12 years. Uh, what it's done, it's taken a telescope into orbit. That telescope will be used to remotely observe planets such as Jupiter, Mars, and Venus. More importantly than that, the, the Epsilon is a good deal cheaper and smaller than previous Japanese uh, rocket models. That means Japan will be able to launch uh, the rocket more frequently, and that will make it a major player, it hopes, in the growing uh, international industry in satellite technology. It'll also help it to keep pace with its rivals in South Korea, China, uh, and India. Uh, it takes just a week to pre prepare for launch, as opposed to six weeks for Japan's previous rockets. Um, and it uh, can actually be launched, according to JAXA, Japanese aeronautical officials, uh, with just a single laptop computer. Um, we've talked often about Fukushima in the past uh, few weeks, of course. Uh, now, this whole issue of Japan's um, reliance on nuclear energy and what it's going to do now that uh, nuclear, en nuclear power has effectively been shut down, at least for the next few months in Japan over the weekend, uh, has made the papers. Again, the Asahi, uh, a story here in the middle about the closure of a reactor in, in Fukui Prefecture down in Western Japan. Now, that means that Japan is now without any nuclear power generation for just the second time uh, in the last 40 years and the second time since the Fukushima meltdown in March 2011. This is a blow to the Prime Minister Shinzo Abe, who wants some of those reactors to go back online. It now looks likely uh, that uh, no nuclear reactor will be restarted for at least another few months. Um, Abe says we absolutely need nuclear reactors to help progress Japan's economic recovery. But for the time being, Japan will have no nuclear power production whatsoever. OK, Justin, we're going to move on to a report now. And uh, while the judges of the International Court of Justice deliberate on the legitimacy of whaling for the sake of scientific research, whalers in Japan staunchly defend this ancient practice, even as appetite for whale meat in the country declines. Our team followed a whaling company in the country's cheaper prefecture. Today, Wada is a hive of activity. Word has spread that after several days of trying, whalers from this fishing town east of Tokyo have caught a 10-metre-long Baird's beaked whale. The news has brought tourists here in their droves. I was born here, so I've been watching whales being flent since I was a child. That's why I wanted to bring my grandchildren today. People oppose whaling, but it's only out of pity, isn't it? In that case, how do they feel about killing cows and sheep? In full view of the tourists, about 15 men slice the whale into pieces. It's tough work. It's going to take four or five hours to butcher the whale today because it's so hot and there's no breeze. One of our workers even suffered from heat stroke. The ancient tradition of coastal whaling became a commercial concern in the early 1900s. Today, coastal whaling is conducted in four Japanese towns. In Wada, the local whaling fleet has permission to kill 26 Baird's beak whales between June and September. The International Whaling Commission does not have the authority to regulate catches of smaller types of whale. Instead, the Japanese government regulates the coastal whaling industry and decides how many whales we're allowed to catch. Coastal whaling is a far cry from the large, highly controversial hunts that Japan conducts in the Antarctic every winter. But the two industries are closely related. 90% of the whales here are Baird's beaked whales from this region. But mink whale tastes better as sashimi, so we also process mink whale meat from the Southern Ocean. Shoji is head of a company with 30 employees and owns restaurants and stores selling whale meat that were once run by his father and grandfather. But business is slowing down. Despite Japan's declining appetite for whale meat, Shoji is determined to keep his family business alive and protect Wada's proud whaling tradition. Before we die, we think about our legacy. 
For me, it's whaling. It's not about making money. It certainly doesn't make much sense financially, but I need to preserve what we have here. In addition to its small coastal whaling program, Japan slaughters hundreds of whales in the Antarctic for what it calls scientific research. For more on this, we can head back to Justin McCurry in Tokyo. Uh, whaling is the source of considerable consternation around the globe. Why do the Japanese insist on defending it? Well, as Mr. Shoji said in the film, um, you know, Japanese, uh, the practice of eating uh, whale meat stretches back for hundreds of years, hunting whales off Japan's coast, also something that stretches back into Japanese history. So the whalers themselves um, and politicians, influential politicians that support them, and the fisheries agency, which obviously wants to protect its own interests, uh, will try and keep whaling as part of, of Japanese modern day culture. The, in, the, in the wider world, well, the Japanese say that if uh, one day J uh, whaling programs are going to come to an end, that's a decision that has to be taken by the Japanese and not uh, as a result of pressure from the likes of Australia and New Zealand. Justin McCurry in Tokyo, that's all we've got time for. Thanks ever so much for joining us. And that's it for Asia Life. Time for a very short break now here on Life in Paris, after which my colleague Stuart Norva will be back with all the latest stories.